February 14th, Valentine's Day. It is a memorable day celebrated all across the world since ancient times to honor the spirit of love. And what can be more appropriate than to celebrate this beautiful day in the city which is officially known as the world's most romantic city, London. As you all know that back then in 2018, it was on Valentine's Day that where I started arpatakarva.com with an intention to rekindle love for literature in every student's heart. And I'm super proud to share that today I'm here celebrating the fifth year anniversary of not just our website, but also our YouTube channel. So today's vlog is going to be all the more special because standing on the bank of River Thames, I am going to be talking about a writer who not just inspired me to build a career in the field of English literature, but it is the same writer in whose works you'll see the word love appearing more than 2146 times. Yes, you got that right. I am talking about the greatest writer of romance and my all-time favourite, Mr. William Shakespeare. And guess what? Right now, I'm in an area which is called South Walk or popularly known as the Bankside. This is the area where Shakespeare lived from 1599 till the time he retired in the year 1630. Today's vlog is a fond dedication to the first love of my life, the bard, Mr. William Shakespeare, whose works made me fall in the world of literature. By the way, talking of love, you must have observed that love is one of the most common themes used in Shakespeare's writing. To Shakespeare, love is deeply infused by power, as it causes both chaos and peace. It is ever present as a driving force of action. Love looks different in each of Shakespeare's play. Love is passionate and all-consuming in Romeo and Juliet. Love is a game in As You Like It. Love springs from hate in Much Ado About Nothing. Love is dangerous in Macbeth. Love justifies revenge in Hamlet. Love is jealous in Othello. And in Midsummer's Night's Dream, love requires courage. Talking about Shakespeare and love, what we cannot forget to mention is the play, which is often called the greatest love story of all time. The tale of two young star-crossed lovers coming from the feuding families of Verona. Yes, you got that right. I'm talking about none other than Romeo and Juliet. Whether it is romance, comedy or tragedy, the works of Shakespeare's is timeless when it comes to human relationships, especially. And it is very apt that today on Valentine's Day, let's look at the most iconic theatre associated with Shakespeare's life. And it is none other than the world famous Globe Theatre. So let's explore the place where Mr. Shakespeare immortalized love through his plays. And let's do something different this Valentine's Day by celebrating it in Shakespearean style. The first Globe Theatre was built between 1597 and 1599 in the area called South Walk on the south bank of the London's River Thames. Funded by Richard Burbage and built by the carpenter Peter Smith and his workers. The Globe were owned by many actors who were also the shareholders in the Lord Chamberlain's men. There were in total six shareholders, which included Richard Burbage and his brother and also Mr. William Shakespeare. It was this theatre where the first performances of Shakespeare's plays were staged, including that of Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, Othello, Antony and Cleopatra, as well as As You Like It. The first play performed was in the year 1599 and it was Julius Caesar. By the way, UGC Net aspirants, you should also know that there were other playwrights as well who were writing for the Globe Theatre. 
such as Thomas Decker, Ben Jonson, and John Fletcher. Shakespeare mentions the globe in several of his works. In Henry V, he refers to it as the this wooden O. And in Tempest, he mentions the great globe itself. Because of its circular shape, the globe would look like an O from the above. The globe is not in the circular shape, rather has an octagonal structure having between 8 and 24 sides. As an open-air theatre, performances in Shakespeare's time and even today are influenced by the weather conditions. Even in the harsh weather conditions, such as a chilly winter or a hailstorm, the theater doesn't stop. Just like our famous Raj Kapoor said, even Globe believes that no matter what, the show must go on. The architectural style of the Globe is similar to that of a Colosseum in Rome, but on a smaller scale. This kind of architecture is known as the Amphitheatre. Coming back to the history of Globe Theatre, what people generally don't know is that the original Globe Theatre was burned down in 1613 during the performance of Shakespeare's Henry VIII. And when there was a special effect on stage and that effect got wrong and the thatched roof caught fire resulting in the burning of the entire theatre. After the fire destroyed the entire Globe Theatre, a second one was quickly rebuilt at the same location in 1614 and this time it had tiled roof to avoid any such emergency situations. The Globe Theatre was shut down in 1642 uh, during the England's Puritan administration and the outbreak of civil war. The second Globe Theatre was demolished in 1644 as it was no longer in use. A core important part. The Globe Theatre was run by the famous acting company, Lord Chamberlain's Men, the company that Shakespeare acted with. In the ring of Queen Elizabeth I, they achieved a lot of success. And in 1603, during the reign of James I, they gained the patronage and subsequently became known as King's Men. Talking about the architecture of the globe, it had three stories of sitting and was able to hold about 3,000 spectators in a 100-foot diameter. It also has a rectangular stage platform, also known as the apron stage. On this stage, there was a trap door that was used by performers to enter from the area beneath the stage, which represented hell. A similar trapdoor is at the ceiling under the roof which represents heavens. And a trapdoor in the heavens will enable performers to descend from heavens using ropes or you know harness. At the same time, you should also know that at the base of the stage there's an area called pit. And those standing on the ground in the front of the stage were referred to as groundlings. Groundlings? Why? because these groundlings were poor people who didn't have a lot of money and they could not pay a lot of amount. So they paid small amount to enjoy the play. It is even today the cheapest area uh, to stand and enjoy the play. By the way, a fun fact. Do you know that the word box office dates back to Shakespeare's time? It was Shakespeare's time when, at the start of each play, uh, people used to collect money from the audience and then that collected money was uh, you know, put in a box full of money and was put backstage. That is when the word backstage was first used. The current theatre that you see right behind me is not the original Globe. It is in fact the third Globe theatre. It was founded by an American actor named Sam Wanamaker. He was also an American director and it was opened in the year 1997. In 1970, this American actor Sam Wanamaker came to London, purchased land very near to the site of the original Globe Theatre and formed the Shakespeare Globe Trust with in the intention of building a exact replica of Shakespeare's theatre. 
It was officially opened by Queen Elizabeth II on June 12, 1997, with a production of Henry V. One interesting fact, it is said that when the actress who was portraying Queen Elizabeth I entered the stage, Queen Elizabeth II, who was sitting in the balcony, bowed down to her. And this was first time in the history when Queen Elizabeth II bowed down to an actor. The costume of the actress is well preserved in the compound of Globe Theatre along with a copy of Shakespeare's first folio. By the way, a very interesting fact that most students don't know. The original site of Globe Theatre stands only a few meters away from the current Globe Theatre. And it is marked by a series of illustrations uh, and uh, boards and panels. It is situated at a road called Park Street, which was earlier known as Maiden Lane. The current Globe Theatre was built after much study of the floor plan, illustrations and descriptions of the original theatre and was built using the traditional construction techniques of the Elizabethan period. Although a fairly recent reconstruction, it still resembles the authentic 16th century building, timber framed building constructed from the English oak. And it is the first and the only building in London to gain building permission for, to, for the traditional thatched roof since the Great Fire that happened in London in the year 1666. The tour of Globe Theatre cannot end without you visiting the Swan Cafe and the Globe Shop that offers an exclusive range of quirky Shakespearean gifts, engrossing books and unique jewellery. And since it's Valentine's Day today, I am going to get myself pampered by buying some goodies for myself. Keeping the Shakespearean tradition alive from last 20 years, every evening one Shakespeare's play is performed live at the Globe Theatre. It brings together people from all walks of life inviting actors and audience to share what we call the banquet of human beings. Right now, they're staging Titus Andronicus and I'm very, very excited to watch it tonight. Conceived, built, rebuilt and rebuilt again, the Globe Theatre since ages has been the vessel that is bringing Shakespeare's genius to the world. With that happy note, I would like to take your leave Please let me know how did you find this video in the comment section below and also you know please like and subscribe to the channel. If you would want me to explore any other literary landmark around the world, please put that in the comment section as well. With that happy note, I would like to take your leave. That's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.